Now we're about to do something that you're probably never going to actually need to do, but it is quite fun and the ability to do it could prove quite useful to you. What we want to do is put a formula or the result of a formula into one of these caption boxes. So we have here someone really thinking hard. The computer asks, what is the volume of this sphere? There's our sphere. She says this is so hard. And what we could do is perhaps either let the computer tell her what the result is, or she has a eureka moment and tells us what the result is. So the first step is to actually insert another caption box. So insert shape and a little call out. We'll put that down here. Point that there so we know she's saying it. But what is she going to say? Well, we need to calculate the actual volume of that sphere. So let's do that in this cell down here. Now, the volume of a sphere is the area of the circle at the end here times the height. Area of the circle is pi radius squared. Well, we know the diameter. So we need to say equals pi, which is a function within Excel. If you didn't know that, you just learned another one. So pi, open and close brackets. So that's going to produce the value of pi. We don't need to give it any parameters. Multiplied by, that's the radius squared, which is 2 to the power of 2. And then that's multiplied by 8. So our volume of this sphere is actually just over 100 cubic inches. So I want that result to be in this text box here. So if I go into that and make sure that contains a text box, I go into Drawing Tools Format Text Box and click. We now have a text box here. And what I can actually do is tell this text box to be equal to the value in that cell there. By being in the text box, going up to the formula bar, clicking on equals, nothing happens without an equal sign, and this cell here. And return, and you'll see the value then appears in here. It appears in here with all the decimal places because it's not formatted. So let's go back to here and adjust this and use the text function around it to display just two decimal places. And we see our text box responds. And what you can't do, unfortunately, is put this whole formula into the formula bar within there because it doesn't quite happily work with that for whatever reason. But we can tell it to look at an existing cell as well as being able to put the result in. Let's put some text in that she might say, Eureka. I now know it is concatenate the result and then concatenate after that cubic inches. Return and then that appears in our text box. Now we can format the text box just as we can any other text, even though it's been driven by a formula. We don't need it to be so large. Eureka, I now know it is 100.53 cubic inches. Now I can also see that in this formula here. So I will just hide that row. So you can make the results of formulas appear in text boxes, which means you can have them floating around the screen. However, they can only equal another cell. So all the work has to be done on the sheet, so actually physically in your worksheet. I've then hidden that cell and just told this particular text box by going to the formula bar to be equal to the result of D21. I then hide D21 from view and this result works. And it physically is calculating this. I know now it is 100.53 cubic inches. Because if we were to unhide that and change the formula, let's say it's nine inches long, the result changes there. And we then hide that. Hopefully, you will see some uses for that. If not, it can be quite fun just to have little caption boxes telling you the result. You know, this month's sales are. The average consumption per mile is whatever you want that cell to equal. It must just equal the contents of a cell. And then that cell is the one that does all the calculation, whether that's some mathematical calculation or whether that's some concatenation. In our particular example, we've managed to use both.